Hi everyone, we are back with our today's story, Fire on the Beard. What a grand picnic everyone had. They played and ate and splashed in water till late evening. Ajja and Ajji had to drag them back home. That night, the children tumbled into bed and were fast asleep even before Ajji switched off the lights. Quietly, she tucked them in. The next morning, there was no sign of anyone waking up. Ajja and Ajji went about their work, not waking the children. But when it was 10 o'clock, Ajji decided they had to wake up now. So she came into the room and found all four were up and chatting in the bed. She looked at them for a while with her hands on the hips. Then she said, So I think you have had enough rest. Now up all of you, wash up and get ready. I will give you your lunch by noon. All the others jumped up except Anand. He grinned at Ajji and said, You know, I can live without food if I get to lie in bed all day. Really? Ajji said. So be it. Everyone else, lunch will be ready at 12. So be there on time. Oh, and those who lie around in bed will also miss the afternoon story. Then she walked off trying to hide a smile. Anand and Miss Amil. He was the one who loved his food the most. Anand was quiet. The rest sprang out of their beds and went to brush their teeth and have a bath. Soon the aroma of onion dosa wafted to the house. It was too delicious to resist. Everyone gathered in the kitchen to help grind the dosa batter. By now, Anand was bored and hungry, lying alone in the bed. He quietly went and took his bath. He was worried. What if Aji had taken him seriously and not kept a share of dosa for him? And what if he had to miss that day's story? When Aji saw him appear at the kitchen and join in, she laughed and said, You have become like bridge. Who is Bridge, Ajji? So, Ajji started the story while the children ate the dosas. Yawn! Bridge stretched out in the sun, yawned loud and long and went back to sleep. Is Bridge a rich man on a holiday? Or has he worked hard all day and just resting for a while? Neither. Bridge was the laziest, most good-for-nothing fellow you will ever meet. He would spend entire days just lying around on his bed doing nothing. He was too lazy to even trim his beard and it had grown right down to his knees. All the day he sat around combing it and admiring it, doing nothing else. His wife would scold him, but Bridge was not one to mend his ways. This is how most conversation with his wife Shanti would go. Can you get some water from the well? There is no water in the house. The well is dry. There is no water there. Can you fetch water from the pond at least? The pond is too far. I can't walk so much for a pot of water. Then pluck those coconuts from the trees. Oh, those coconuts are still tender. Let's pluck them next month. What about getting some areca nuts from the tree then? Don't you know, areca nuts are not good for health. Help me plough the field then. It's too hot. The sun will burn my skin. It's better if you too did not go there. Can you at least look after the house when I am in the field? There is nothing to look after the house. And so on and on. Breach would make excuses for not doing any work that was asked of him. Of course, he was never too tired to eat. As soon as his wife would lay out the meal, he would jump out of the bed saying, 
Oh, you have prepared food for me with such love. It's my duty to eat it. And then he would gobble down all that was given. When evening fell, Bridge would roll out of bed, comb his hair and beard and set off to meet his gang of friends. Seeing how he managed to get out of doing any work, many others in the village had decided to do the same. All these people had formed a club, the Idlers Club. They would meet every evening and sit around and talk about all kinds of things. They claimed this way they were improving their general knowledge, but all they were doing was gossip and boast. Bridge, as the leader of the club, would get to boast the loudest and longest. One day, the topic was who was the laziest of all. Bathing every day is such a waste of time and precious water. I take a bath once in two days. That way I even save water, said Manoj, the environmentalist. I never make my bed, boasted Suresh, the innkeeper. Why bother when you have to lie down in it once again at the end of the day? I eat my food out of the vessel in which it is cooked, claimed Raju the cook. Putting the food in the plate only increases the work and he will need to wash it too. Now, Bridge thought he should say something that would beat all these other tales. So he said, I am always cool and calm. Why, even if my beard were to catch fire, I would start digging a well at that time and never store water close at hand. All these discussions were happening. A real fire broke out in the village. It burned down buildings and roofs and sheds, crackling and throwing up sparks. Many villagers run, helter-skelter looking for water to douse the flames. The idlers club heard all the commotion. No one bothered to step out to see what was happening. What is going on? They only asked each other. Oh, nothing. Bridge dismissed the topic. Must be some circus or the other. So what were we talking about? By now, the fire had spread to their road. It was fast making its way to the house where the idlers were sitting. It got hotter and hotter. Brit's friend started sweating and getting nervous now. Soon the roof of the house caught fire. Still Bridge kept saying, Don't worry, don't worry, it will drain now and put this out. Then the wind is blowing in the opposite direction and will blow it down. We are really cool people. We should not be afraid of fire. Finally, his friends could stand it no longer and rushed screaming out of the house. But Bridge was too stubborn and he refused to move. Finally, the fire caught up with him and his beard started getting singed. Now even Bridge was scared. Help! He shouted. Now you can start digging the well, his friends suggested. Oh, get me some water from the pond, Bridge begged. That's too far away, the others shouted from the outside. Maybe it will rain, they added. By now, the beard was burning away merrily and all Bridge could do was to leap and dance away from the flames. Till suddenly there were splashes and the splashes of water. Someone was emptying cool, cool water on the fire and putting it out. Breach could not believe his luck. Who had saved him? Why, it was Shanti and many other women of the village who had walked hard and drawn water from the wells and ponds to save their homes. Finally, Breach learned his lesson. Being lazy and pretending to be cool had certainly not helped him in his hour of need. So, he shaved off his half-burnt beard woke up early each morning and did all that Shanti told him to do and even more.